With me today is Jose de Jesus Garcia Vega. Pepe, could you please uh, tell me your current position and affiliation? Yes. Of course, I am professor of economics in, at the University of Monterey, uh, and also I am a director of the Center of Wellbeing Studies at the same university in Mexico. Very good. Can you tell me um, what you see as your main contributions to the field of well-being? Well, I would say that uh, we are one of the pioneers, and I mean, our center is one of the pioneers uh, on the study of well-being, subjective well-being in Mexico. Uh, we started 12 years ago with, uh, with this project, and we developed a study in well-being in the metropolitan area of Monterey. And I guess we came only behind uh, Mariano Rojas in, in Mexico and, uh, and a couple of others. <coughs> and uh, after that, we have been working on these projects on, of uh, well-being and quality of life. And probably the, the, the most remarkable project we have is having developed a, an index of quality of life for Mexico. Uh -huh. And this project uh, has been applied at the national level, wow. and then at the state level, and then at the municipal level. Amazing. This, this is something that we are promoting uh, all over Mexico. And uh, I guess <coughs> uh, the idea of measuring quality of life uh, is going beyond uh, the, the just uh, the, the public, the general public. We are also promoting this idea of measuring well-being and quality of life in the schools and mm -hmm. also at the labor place. Uh, so we have had a couple of projects on, on labor quality of life and where we measure the labor satisfaction. And, and, and I guess we are advancing on that. And that, was pro that is probably what uh, we have done in the field of well-being. Well, it's an amazing uh, accomplishment. Um, did you have trouble getting the government to buy into this? Uh, oh, sure, sure. It's <laughs> it's very difficult. <clears throat> we had uh, we were, were lucky to to find somebody the first time. That was in 2008. Mm -hmm. 2000, uh, the, a person that was working in the center research center and the Congress in Mexico, and he uh, did really liked the idea. So we worked together. We developed this uh, uh, index. Of quality of life, and they pay for the survey, so we were lucky for that. And after that, at the state level, the the government of Colima looked for looked for us, and also at the municipal level in Garza Garcia and Nuevo León, uh, we have been promoting this, and we have talked to several governments in Mexico, state governments, and uh, they like the idea, but they, they just don't want to invest the resources. Uh, so uh -huh. I guess it's like everybody. Uh, we, we believe this field is, is uh, new, and, uh, but it's getting more popular, and people are getting more interested in this. So I guess uh, they, will, they are going to do it sooner or later. And uh, any trouble getting it uh, accepted in uh, schools or uh, uh, employee <clears throat> settings? Are these, are these factories, are they blue collar jobs, white collar, or pink, or a mixture? Um, we, uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> again, the, the, the topic is, is, is new. Um, I guess it, right now it's more accepted for, for, for the general public. When we started, it was, it was terrible. I mean, I mean, being an economist and saying that mm -hmm. I was working on quality of life or, or, or happiness, <laughs> yes. it, it was like crazy. Uh, <clears throat> right now, they, they do believe in this. And mm -hmm. they, they are interested, especially in, in the schools. They think that uh, if they understand what, uh, what are the determinants of quality of a school life, they, you know, they can have students to, to perform better to stay longer at mm -hmm. the schools, especially the universities. 
uh, so that's <clears throat> uh, retention. That's, that's yes, an it's issue. a big concern. That's an issue yeah. for especially for private universities, mm -hmm. um, but also for high schools. They mm -hmm. they are interested in this because uh, it is proved that uh, a happier student is, mm -hmm. performs better. Uh, on the workplace, uh, I guess uh, this is becoming more popular. Uh, last year, Harvard Business Review got an, an, an issue where, where they talk about the relationship between well-being and, and productivity <laughs> and, rent, uh, and, and uh, profitability. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Those who are interested and in, those who are learning about the, the, the latest issues, I guess they believe in that. So it, it, it's a matter of time that uh, that they really get into this measurement, mm -hmm. but still, you know, it's like uh, every new topic. You have to invest time, you have to invest uh, resources, mm -hmm. and you have to come and, and build the network so they, you can count on people like uh, the, the the people that are here in this seminar symposium, and and then uh, I, I guess the 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 projects will come. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other contributions to the field that um, that you'd like to share with us uh, that you've well, made? Well, I, I like the, my contribution to the World Book of Happiness, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, some of the ideas that I mm -hmm. <clears throat> put in my contribution were taken by by a person and uh, and uh, she had an article in the Daily Mail from wow. the UK. Really? And, and yeah, exciting. That was, that you was picked that up. And this was in the handbook. Uh, uh, that was a workbook of happiness. The work and uh, uh, who was edi edited by Leo Warmans. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and and um, so it was so, picked up in the UK by the media. Yeah, and uh, since this is a. a news service from uh, to uh, on the internet mm -hmm. uh, a lot of countries huh? picked it really <laughs> yeah uh -huh. so uh, suddenly I saw my name uh, written <laughs> in 12 different languages wow which is was, was really it's very impressive yeah and I guess um, <coughs> pe I mean the, the idea that uh, people from from Mexico, uh, are contributing to this to this uh, area. I think is is something really remarkable. Mm -hmm. It is it, it is not because of me. I mean, mm -hmm. Mariano and Joaquina and mm -hmm. some other mm -hmm. some other persons in Mexico are working on this, and uh, I guess that's that is good because uh, uh, we have in some way uh, pushed the government mm -hmm. and to for for. Measurement of well-being mm -hmm. and subjective well-being, and uh, I guess our work has has to so has something to do with uh, with this action taken by the Mexican government. Now the Mexican government is measuring subjective well-being, and I think this is something that uh, is uh, uh, because of us that mm -hmm. uh, we have been pushing and we have been writing and we have been asking mm -hmm. to take. A subjective well-being seriously. <clears throat> well, it's a tremendous accomplishment because there's only about maybe less than a dozen countries doing this. Yeah. So for yeah. Mexico to be there is a wonderful thing, and that's it. And it was your hard work. It uh, sounds like I would say I would say that we have uh, something to do with that, and mm -hmm. and uh, the official statistics office has come to us to ask us uh, how to do it mm -hmm. and uh, what to consider. And, and I think uh, this is the result of all mm -hmm. those years that we have devoted mm -hmm. to, to the area. So um, any other, uh, any other uh, research uh, projects you've done related to well-being you want to highlight today? Well, last year we did this project uh, relating um, insecurity and happiness. Mm -hmm. And the first one we did it in 2002, and and the other one was 2011, so nine years later. Mm -hmm. And we we had a chance to to prove that insecurity affects uh, happiness. 
So uh, it wasn't that much, mm -hmm. but, uh, but there was an effect of the insecurity. Also, we proved that uh, even though the, the idea of uh, that insecurity affects uh, people and people should be unhappy, uh, we proved that uh, that's not true mm -hmm. because even with the insecurity, the level of happiness in Monterey is still high. Uh, and that means that all the theory about happiness, uh, all the theory that relates the family relationships, friends relationships, and religious beliefs mm -hmm. helps to be happy. So mm -hmm. uh, we have proved that, and mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's something that uh, is good. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple of books in, in Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, one called... Uh, well-being and quality of life in Mexico, oh. and, and I guess that's a good reference for, for, for people. The other one is related to the metropolitan area mm -hmm. in, in, in Monterey. And for a year and a half or so, I was going to a TV news program uh, to speak about happiness. Very and, good. Uh, and that was, I think that was good because yeah. uh, people you know, got tired of uh, listening only bad mm -hmm. news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would, you know, meet people at the supermarket and would say, oh, Dr. Garcia, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your, your ideas oh. to be happy. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, that's, that's yeah. something that uh, I, I think it adds to the, to the idea of improving well-being in Mexico. Well, it's, uh, it's something that many people emphasize uh, in... Uh, in many researchers in the sense of uh, the need to translate our findings for the general public and policy makers as well as other researchers. So you're actually, you're doing both it sounds like. Well that's the idea. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, uh, and I was talking to some people today, uh, we academicians and researchers mm -hmm. sometimes get frustrated because uh, all the hard work just mm -hmm. you know, rests in a book yeah, or, yeah. or an article, yeah. and, and then I mean, very, very, few, very people few people read it. Read it. Yeah, <laughs> so uh -huh. if, if we go beyond that and, yes. and, and reach the you know the, uh -huh. the, the public, that's that's something that uh, makes you feel better. That's very important. Yeah. Um, now you're talking about your insecurity finding. Um, how do you define insecurity? Well, <clears throat> this uh, afternoon we were showing some numbers. So for example, in Monterey in 2002, <laughs> there were like uh, the statistics of uh, murders mm -hmm. uh, per 100,000 people, mm -hmm. and the number was four. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2011, that number was 46. Mm -hmm. So wow. the insecurity, you know, rose a lot. A lot of, ten times, mm -hmm. so and, and happiness went down from nine point one to eight point six, still high, mm -hmm. but uh, but you know it dropped a little bit. So we we had this problem in Mexico, especially in Monterey, and the north part of Mexico. It was it was uh, even even tougher mm -hmm. and more difficult. Um, that was caused because of the drug cartels and all that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's getting better, but, uh, but that's, that's something that affected yeah. us. Affected yeah. us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in that sense, can you say uh, people are resilient in terms of that oh. kind of violence or insecurity in their yeah, neighborhoods? Yeah, I, I would say so. And, mm -hmm. uh, was the violence evenly distributed in the, the city area? Pretty well, much, not exactly, okay. but, uh, but, but we all felt. Mm -hmm. We all felt it. We all felt, felt yes. Yeah, okay. uh, Very good. Uh, because you could live in a nice neighborhood. Yes. And uh, I mean, the, the violent, violence rate was lower. But again, you, you felt threatened because mm -hmm. some people could come to your, your neighborhood. Yes. Uh, and, and yes, and I, I guess uh, that theory of positive psychology that uh, circumstances affect only a little part of your happiness mm -hmm. that also was proved that, that uh, uh -huh. e even though the circumstances changes change i mean changes the change the you, your happiness it is affected but not too much yes yes and, yes. and yeah resilience has to do so with with that uh, and i guess latin americans mexicans are are really happy by nature 
Mm -hmm. So they, mm -hmm. we try to find ways to to keep that happiness level. If uh, there's violence outside uh, on your neighborhood, just stay at home. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Bring people to your home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, if the roads are are dangerous. Don't go out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's that's what we, we try to adapt. <laughs> adaptable, very adaptable. Well, um, I guess uh, uh, being a trailblazer in this way, you must uh, have an opinion about the uh, some of the the findings related to uh, to Mexico and other Latin American countries in terms of greater happiness and maybe more than is expected uh, based on income, according to some researchers. Uh, do you have an opinion about that based on your research and study? Yeah, yeah. Um, th there's what they call, uh, everybody calls the Latin American factor. Yes. And, uh, and, and also we, we see that in, in Monterey. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I believe family. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, modest expectations has, mm -hmm. has to do with, mm -hmm. uh, with our happiness. And the idea of uh, enjoying life. Uh, I mean, we we have we have that on gene, on the genes, and, mm -hmm. and we we are gonna uh, we're gonna try to be happy no matter what happens. And, and mm -hmm. as I uh, a secretary and uh, an assistant um, in, in my university put it, I wrote an article. Well, I have. Wrote, written seven articles mm -hmm. for the newspapers, yeah. local newspapers, <clears throat> and um, one of them was like a stubborn, stubbornly happy. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and, and she wrote me an email and she said, uh, you know, doctor, I, I agree completely with you. Huh? I mean, no matter what happens, I'm going to try to be happy uh -huh. because I'm from here and, uh, huh. and this is my nature. Huh. So we, that's, that's probably... Uh, shows how people are in, in, in Monterey and in Mexico. Uh, we're gonna try to find a way to be mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> but again, the explanation may be family, maybe friends, mm -hmm. maybe religion, maybe uh, adaptation. So we mm -hmm. have we have some characteristics that help us to to be yes happy. yes well um. Uh, there's a saying in France, I don't know if it's really translatable to well-being benefits, but th something to the effect of uh, uh, love, uh, art, and food come before work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, is that a similar idea maybe that uh, you're not uh, well, as we obsessed say, with work or uh, making money? Or? You know, uh, Monterey is a, is a region that is characterized to be hard, hard working people mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have uh, in the area we don't have natural resources we are mm -hmm. in you know mountains uh, mm -hmm. all over it's mm -hmm. like a valley mm -hmm. and we don't even have water we have to bring the water from wow. some, some wow. for, for places uh, but uh, but still we we believe in work or they yeah. You know, I got there 16 years ago, but I actually, I guess I, I became one of them. Uh, uh -huh. We believe in work, but, but we believe in family. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, people, you know, the, 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 the directors of the firms, mm -hmm. they understand that too. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if I have a problem, they would help me. Mm -hmm. to get uh, that problem solved with uh, if I have a family issue mm -hmm. they let me they let me go so mm -hmm. this is there's this idea of we have to be productive we have to mm -hmm. work and we have to produce but uh, also we shouldn't forget about the family mm -hmm. and that's that's probably um, it goes a little bit with what you're saying about the French. I mean, mm -hmm. family comes comes first, and then mm -hmm. comes then work. Are there um, is there more of a, a stable extended family? Do you think in uh, Monterey mm -hmm. than uh, some uh, other Western country? I would say so. Okay. In Mexico, and, and that's uh, probably Latin American mm -hmm. characteristic. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, mom and dad close to to where we live. Mm -hmm. So when when the kids are are young or very mm -hmm. young, we both 
wife, wife and husband can go to work, and so the kids can stay with grandma. Or grandma. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's uh, and that's that's very good because you're going to work and you're mm -hmm. tranquil. I mean, yes. no problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, if you send it to school, you know, some, sometimes mm -hmm. you don't feel that that good. Yes. So th there's extended family, and if you don't have it. You created. You uh -huh. you make the friends part of your family. So I see. I so, see. Yeah, we are, uh, we don't have a uh, well couple of nephews that came to Monterey to to study, but other than that, uh, we are uh, by the Mexican standards, we are alone in Monterey. Mm -hmm. Our family. Yes. <clears throat> but uh, I mean, we have friends. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yes, that's that's nice. Well, it's very positive and. Um, uh, in terms of uh, other practical implications of their work, of your work, is there any other practical uh, uh, lessons or advice you can give based on your research? Well, uh, we have been pushing for for measurement. Uh, when when I get into this idea of happiness, and then. Uh, got into the indicators, community indicators mm -hmm. movement. Uh, I think that was a the combination that I needed all my I mean the combination that uh, came uh, with the quality of life index. Quality mm -hmm. of life index was a result of this combination of mm -hmm. happiness and community indicators. So uh, I've been pushing for for measurements, measurement mm -hmm. of what really matters, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and of course, when I talk to to firms or schools or, or governments, I say well, we have to to take into account what people really matters, uh, because if you keep me measuring uh, roads and expenditures and this mm -hmm. and that, mm -hmm. and you don't really measure the impact of what mm -hmm. uh, expenditures uh, make so you, you're wasting your money I mean so uh, uh, I guess that is the another idea that we have mm -hmm. pushed for which is the, the measurement of yes. what really matters and look at the impact of different uh, activities and when you say what really matters are you um, Talking about subjective indicators, and can you say what some of those are? Well, especially uh, subjective indicators, because mm -hmm. we don't uh, we don't have the the whole idea of mm -hmm. what quality of life is. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people only think about material mm -hmm. indicators. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess this is something that uh, that I I have been pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, the to to measure the the, the complete set of indicators. Yes. And, and, uh, and I was just talking this morning in, in the symposium about the uh, Alex Michalos's mm -hmm. uh, hell and, and paradise, real hell and real <laughs> yes, paradise. Yes, yes. Yeah. And this is something that I use a lot. Uh -huh. I, I thank Alex for this uh -huh. this idea uh, because I. I, I I tell I tell people if you only measure material things mm -hmm. and people are unhappy, mm -hmm. you're not getting progress. You're not getting quality of life. Mm -hmm. You're not getting well-being. So very good. Uh, so I'm pushing for that, and uh, every time you know, every time I I, I I mention this and I mention the idea of, they liked it. <laughs> <laughs> they they like the idea. Uh -huh. So it's. Um, it's difficult to, to sell the project, but, <laughs> but they agree with that. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for your contribution and your time today. No, no problem, Mike.